We made it. Final episode of the series, and you just saw the very first movement out of that Jeep in five months. So I'm very excited. I just took a little spin around the block. Everything works. We have a ton of stuff to cover, so let's get started. I want to take a quick second to talk about a sponsor that works behind the scenes on this channel and a whole lot of other YouTube channels that you guys watch, and that is Adam's Drive Shaft. This is one of those companies that they know they're not going to get an entire Drive Shaft video and get a whole bunch of advertising for their product, but they're still willing to work with smaller channels like me to help move our build process along. And they even have yokes and a whole bunch of other things that are related your drivetrain. So if you were in the market for a drive shaft, consider Adams. If you use the coupon code Dirt Lifestyle, you'll save 15% and it'll show Adams drive shaft that them investing that time and money with our channel is worth it. Don't mind all the clutter. I have been working like a dog on this thing to get it ready for tomorrow, but it is on all four tires. I just drove it around the block. Everything seems to be working. I'm very excited. I think that stance looks so much better. I am very happy with how squatty and how long this looks. 103 inches, I triple checked. It is exactly what we were planning for. I'm glad it turned out. And uh, like we had talked about in one of the earlier videos, the rear tires hang out just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. And I like it. I think it looks awesome. The rear corner armor is semi comp cut. I don't like the comp cut look, but this is not like fully committed comp cut. Here's how the fenders turned out. <laughs> People ask me what I paint with. This is just Rust-Oleum spray paint, just their cheapy bed liner stuff. Um, I like the fit and finish of it. It's not super durable, but it's relatively inexpensive and you can buy it pretty much anywhere. I upgraded the rear coilovers to some two and a half inch Bill Stein or Bill Steen. I'm still not sure how you say it. Coilovers. These are larger than the King coilovers that I took off of it. They're actually 14 inch long and the Kings were 16, so they're shorter, but they're larger in diameter, which means that they hold more oil. They're gonna be a little bit cooler off road whenever I'm running really fast in the desert or wherever. I have some triple bypass front shocks that are gonna be showing up for this later this week. But until then, I'm gonna have to run my old King shocks. These things are fine. Um, I just wanna get something that's a little more tunable. So when those show up, we're gonna take this back out and we're gonna fully tune the suspension. Check out how this fuel tank skid turned out. Oh, that looks good under there, I like it. And that's my exhaust. I don't know why I think that's so cool, but I really do. I, uh, I've got a little gap between where the fuel tank ends over here and the frame rail, and I decided to dump my exhaust right down in between that space, just kind of hanging down just a little bit, and I'll be rolling coal out of that spot in the future. I'm pretty excited about it. You guys have been watching me work on this Jeep for what, six, seven episodes now, something like that. And there's just been a lot of work, not a lot of play. This episode, we're gonna go wheeling twice and I want to do a shakedown run tomorrow. So we're gonna go do some light wheeling, some light wheeling, but the whole plan is not to just push it all the way out and go as fast as we can over whoops, nothing like that. We're gonna save that for a tuning trip, which will be at the end of this episode. So for now, we are just gonna use this sweet little power tank jammy. We're gonna fill up our bump stops halfway. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna show you how this tank works. I'm going to show you how to tune triple bypass shocks. I'm going to show you how to set up coilovers, all that other stuff. But for now, we need to just take it out and have some fun. stable even just on the road it just seems to be taking bumps a little bit more supple and uh, there's a couple cons it's not all pros I've picked up a little vibration in here you know where the shift linkage and everything goes to the floor has moved around a little bit so I think I'm gonna have to pull the center console trim a little bit of the body away in order to accommodate that change but so far everything everything seems to be working great I can give it full throttle and nothing falls apart that's always good Right 
The shakedown run went awesome. I didn't break anything. The Jeep is incredibly stable in comparison to what it used to be. I didn't have to pucker on anything steep anywhere. It was truly, truly a night and day difference. Now, let's celebrate with installing some shocks. This bad mamma jamma is a triple bypass shock. Some of you guys are very familiar with what this is. Some of you guys have probably never seen anything like this, or maybe you've seen it on an Ultra 4 car and you're not sure what the heck it is we're looking at. So today, I wanna to talk about coils versus coilovers. We're gonna talk about bypass shocks. We're gonna talk about old school shocks. We're gonna talk about a lot. This is an example of an old school shock that I think is pretty damn cool. This is something you're gonna find in a vehicle that's from like the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So this mounts to the frame or chassis somewhere, and then this will mount eventually to an axle. And this works just like a normal shock. It basically just resists that distance between your frame and your axle going each direction. And it makes it to where it dampens your ride. For most of us today, when you say the word shock, this is exactly what we envision. This is what you're gonna find on most modern cars, trucks, SUVs, these vans, anything like that. And this is basically just a series of discs that are all bolted together that make it to where it resists going through oil whenever your axle gets closer or farther away from wherever it's mounted on your frame. So this just dampens the ride a little bit. Same exact concept as what this is, just newer technology. This is an external reservoir shock, and this is a very large step up from your standard monotube shock. And that's for a couple of reasons. This has the ability to be tuned and the ability to be rebuilt. You can pull this thing apart, you can change the valving in it, and you can basically make it to where it's stiffer or softer based on whatever your ride requirements are. Also, this has a larger body that is full of oil and then it has a separate body that is full of nitrogen. So you can get a lot better cooling off road like this. If you have a shock like this and you go off road, next time you're on your way to the trail and you're on a really long dirt road, whenever you get to the trailhead, go and feel the shock. You're gonna feel that it's hot. The hotter this shock gets, the more it fades and it'll just get, the ride will really suffer. This can do the same thing, but it will go much, much farther before it'll get hot and before you'll start to see that fade happen. This bad boy is externally tunable. So this is a bypass shock. This also has the external reservoir and everything like we just talked about, but this is the holy grail for a number of reasons. And you know, they make them even bigger and even wilder than this, but this is probably as complicated as I'll ever get on my little TJ over there. This has a larger body than this one, as you can see, so this holds more oil. This also has a larger body for nitrogen, all great things. But if you wanna tune it, you don't necessarily have to take it apart. Now you can take it apart and it does have valving inside that you can tune, but before you get to that point, you can adjust these little screws on the outside here to adjust the tuning and everything outside of the shock. So this makes it to where you have zones basically. This is two zone shock because it's a, a triple bypass. So it has a zone that would be for the shorter part of the travel. It has a zone that would be for a really long part of the travel, like if you're gonna do a jump or something like that. And then it has a zone that's basically just the rebound. So this would be how fast the shock extends back out like where it is right now, it's fully extended. So you can turn these little screws and this will change how quickly the piston moves up and down in the shock because it will bypass the fluid around the piston. With a shock like this, every little bit of movement is oil being forced through the valving of the shock. This does the same thing, but you can bypass that, making it to where it's very, very tunable. So I hope that makes sense, and I hope this is something you guys can wrap your head around as to why there's a benefit to having such a big, crazy shock like this. I mean, not only does this look absolutely incredible, but it has a really big, unique purpose that you can't get um, outside of a bypass shock. Now I wanna talk about something that I get asked about all the time, and that is coils versus coilovers. So your standard coil sprung setup is great because so many vehicles come this way, OEM. So it comes with a coil, it comes with a shock right next to it, and all your mounting and brackets and everything's all figured out OEM. So if you wanna lift it, you just get a longer one of these. If you want a better ride quality, you get a better one of these. It's very simple and it's pretty cost effective in comparison to a coilover setup. For those of you that are unfamiliar, this is a coilover. So this is basically as the name implies. The coil is mounted over the shock and this makes it to where it's a very nice streamlined package. Um, they're very expensive, but they're very tunable, and there's a number of different pros and cons to having something like this. If you're trying to convert an older vehicle over to a more comfortable ride, so if you have leaf springs and you wanna go to a system like this, the mounting of this sucks in comparison to a coilover. Coilover has a huge advantage there. This takes up a lot of space on an axle and a lot of space on a frame in terms of getting all your brackets and everything mounted correctly. But with a coilover, it's super easy because you just got two tabs on bottom, two tabs on top, and you're done. 
It makes it extremely simple. You know, a lot of times you have to build a shock hoop or something like that, but you're still only mounting one item on top, one item on bottom. So a lot of folks with TJs, JKs, XJs, they will get rid of this whole situation and they will just put one big coilover in here. The coilover is great. I'm definitely not knocking coilovers, but they do that for adjustability. And when you look at this setup, this has three really important areas of adjustability. We have the adjustability of the sway bar. You can adjust it through these different holes to make it stiffer or looser. We have the adjustability of this hydraulic bump stop, and this will completely change the way this vehicle lands for sure. And then we have the adjustability of this shock. And this the shock having three different areas of adjustability um, gives us a ton of control. When you look at this as a total package, this is a very tunable suspension setup. So a lot of folks will ask me questions as to why I don't upgrade from this to coilovers. It is simply because this is a very effective way of tuning a really high quality ride. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna go and tune the front suspension of this Jeep. Now, there's a lot of different strategies to tune shocks like this and to tune a suspension system like this. I'm gonna start firm and slowly loosen it up until it's a ride quality that I like. Now I'm gonna make sure that I pump my tires up really firm because I don't want my tires to do any of the dampening. I wanna know exactly what the shock is doing and how it feels. I normally run about six to eight PSI whenever I'm off road in my tires. I'll probably be at about 15 tomorrow just just to make sure that it's firm enough for me to see what the shock is doing and how it feels, and it'll make it a little bit easier to tune by feel, because that's what we're doing at the end of the day. We're tuning it in a way that feels the best. There's no scientific measuring with any of this stuff. It's all based on your preference, or in this case, my preference. All right, we're here at LB Hills Off-Road Park, down probably 45 minutes from where I live. I've got the Jeep all set up. I can already tell just by pulling this off the trailer that the front suspension is really stiff. Just like we expected, we had those screws turned all the way in. One of the reasons I want to turn those screws all the way in is so that we can count uh, the turns out to make it even on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Allen and I'm just going to do two full turns on uh, the lower bypass and then I guess I'll do one full turn on the upper bypass. We're going to go drive it down the road and see how it feels. That is immediately better. Oh yeah, there we go. It was so stiff pulling it off the trailer. I could just immediately tell this is gonna be, this will be too rough. So we didn't even have to drive it. We did two turns on the initial part of the stroke and then I just one, did one turn on the little bit deeper part of the stroke. So this feels pretty good just on a dirt road. It's not too bad, really. I'm gonna have to, pick up speed a little bit to see. Ah, it's a little harsh. Nothing crazy though. The Jeep feels like a sports car. It does not feel like a Jeep on 40s. It's incredible. So things are really good. It's still, the suspension's tight, but it doesn't feel uncomfortable. But I'm gonna loosen these up a little bit more just kind of for experimentation. I think the guess that I did was actually really close to what I would like on a suspension system for driving down dirt roads and forest roads and stuff like that. But I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit more and just kind of see what characteristics I uh, sacrifice and what characteristics I gain. This is absolutely softer. That adjustment was actually really, that was a good move. I'm glad that we did it. It's, um, it's interesting. There are things that I liked about it being a little stiffer, but like we can take some pretty big potholes and we can go I mean, I'm going at a pretty decent speed right now and everything feels really controllable still. So I don't think I'm going to soften it up much more than this. I think this is good. I think I'm ready to hit some trails.
We're about to hit a couple hard obstacles and this is the perfect opportunity to talk about bump stop tuning. If you watched earlier in this series, you saw that I had these little rubber O-rings that are on the bump stops and you push them all the way up to the top. And then as you troll along throughout the day, it makes it to where you can basically have like a high water mark as to how far um, you're pushing that bump stop. Now there's a part where we were hauling ass down a dirt road and I could feel it a couple times bottom out almost completely. So we got out, we take a look at our high water mark. And that's what we got right there. As you can see, we have about a quarter inch left so we went through the two first stages of uh, the softness that's associated with this bump stop and we're down to where we're definitely in the oil. So this has 150 pounds right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this power tank kit and we're gonna pump it up. What's nice about a kit like this is that we can just take it on the trail with us and we can pump up stuff as we go. This kit is really slick. It's got everything you need to get started. This is something that I was definitely very interested in. So I got a hold of the people at Power Tank to see if they wanted to continue to work with me um, because I did do a video where I used their CO2 tank and just gave my honest opinion about the whole setup. So they liked my videos, they wanted to continue to work with me. So I'm gonna give you my opinion on this, but know that I didn't pay for it. Power Tank sent it out to me. So I'm just gonna give you a rundown on how this works. And you're gonna be seeing me throughout the next year using this tank on and off while I'm tuning the suspension on this. Before I contacted Power Tank, I did a bunch of research on different nitrogen setups. And I actually went to my local welding supply and I priced out the regulator and I priced out a bottle and everything else. And it was actually really spendy to just get a, a really big bottle that's not convenient at all and a very bare bones um, setup for filling. But this kit comes with a bunch of different stuff to fill them, which is nice because it's one thing that I discovered is that a lot of places don't fill these, but it comes with little adapters and whatnot that make it to where it's really easy to fill yourself. So you can actually buy a bigger nitrogen tank to fill yourself in a shop, or I actually went to my friends over at Four Parts Tacoma and I got them to fill it for me. So this had everything in the kit to hook up to their mother bottle. And then they basically, they open everything up and it equalizes the pressure between the two tanks. Supposedly this can tune a lot of shocks and a lot of bump stops. So we're gonna find out. This setup is super easy to use. All we need to do is pierce the Schrader valve and we're just gonna twist this bad boy in. There we go. Now we're gonna open this. We're gonna open this up and we can watch our pressure go up. So now we're at 100, 150, and we're gonna go all the way up to two, I don't know, let's call it like 225. I think that's a pretty good increase. We're gonna be 75 PSI higher than we were before. And uh, later on today, we're just gonna start cooking and booking and see if we bottom these out again. So these are the fine tuning adjustments that it takes to slowly set up a suspension the way you want it. Again, it's all preference. I'm just slowly trying to find where I really think it rides the best and then we'll take it from there. It is your typical rainy Washington day up here at Elby Hills. And as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of wet rocks ahead of us. And I'm sure in the camera, it looks like a walk in the park, but trust me, when you see this in person, it's very wet, it's very slippery, <laughs> and it's gonna be a good challenge for our fresh build, so we're gonna give it a shot. Tragedy has struck. I uh, I made it all the way through this gauntlet and the back half of this, which is the hardest stretch, isn't on the tape. I don't know why. I know it's not a tape for you young people. We used to put stuff on tapes. It's not on the memory card. For whatever reason, it stopped filming. And this is a big enough struggle that I don't want to do it again. So we're gonna have to do that in a future video. I'm sorry, I know you think I'm lame, but we are here by ourselves and uh, I don't want to have to try and winch out of this crazy little dirt hole right here but there's lots more fun to be had, so we're gonna go find it.
The stretch is complete and I could not be happier. This thing is so much more stable on inclines. It is so much more stable at speed. It is just, it is miles above what it was before. I, I love driving it and I can't wait to get out and wheel it again. In fact, if you didn't get enough wheeling in this video, I'm about to leave in three hours to go to something called Trail SEMA. So I'm gonna be loading up the Jeep. I'm gonna be heading down to Phoenix, Arizona. I know we're gonna be going through four states. We're gonna be starting in Arizona, but I don't know what it looks like for all that wheeling. I know that it's supposed to be quite the gauntlet though. So if that's something you like watching, make sure you check out the next video whenever i complete the next video i'll put a link in the description so if you're seeing this after it's all complete you can just click that link but i'm gonna be wheeling with a bunch of other youtubers light bright ian for big tire garage uh busted knuckle my boys over at bleep and jeep uh jk gear and gadgets there's a whole bunch of us that are gonna be wheeling together and it is gonna be a lot of action and a lot of fun thank you to all the sponsors that made this series possible ballistic fabrication bill steen shocks adams drive shaft and locked off road without these guys it is so much harder to build something like this and have it be with a budget. You guys all know you're just like me. You have to go buy all this stuff yourself. So whenever these guys help out small YouTube channels, it is a huge help to us. It truly, truly is. Cameras, editing equipment, all this stuff is super expensive. So it's nice to get some help with parts. If this is the first video that you've seen of mine, I've got a whole bunch of other content on here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. If you want to follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you guys next time. Holy cow, this is dirty. Rear bump stops are good, the front bumps, heh. <laughs>